In 1883, on a rooftop in New York, Charles Fritz installed the first ever solar cell, producing the photovoltaic effect using thin layers of gold coated in selenium. While it was less than 2% efficient, it may have actually been the beginning of a solar energy revolution. But that revolution has been a long time coming. A century later, in 1983, a lot of progress in photovoltaics had been made, but efficiencies remained stubbornly low, and at $20 per watt, solar was far too expensive to be commercially viable. In the last 40 years, however, things have changed. Solar is over 50 times cheaper than in 1983, and has over 700 gigawatts of global installed capacity, and climbing quickly. There are various promising headlines about a solar revolution, and claims that it's our energy future. However, in the context of our energy system, solar still has little impact, providing just 3% of global energy generation. Solar capacity is increasing quickly, but key problems remain. Can solar really produce a large percentage of global energy? What challenges will it need to overcome? How much of a role will solar play in the future of energy? Cheap, clean energy remains one of our largest technological challenges. As we saw in the last energy video, it doesn't just help solve some of the world's greatest problems, it also has the potential to propel multiple promising industries. To say it could transform our future would be an understatement. Aside from nuclear and geothermal, most of our energy actually comes from the sun, at least indirectly. The wind that powers turbines, the evaporation cycle that powers hydropower, even fossil fuels are really just long dead biomass that have locked up the sun's energy for millions of years. This should put into perspective the sheer quantity of energy our sun supplies. Earth continuously receives around 0.2 exawatts of solar radiation. In comparison, our civilization consumes energy at a rate of just 0.01% of this. Solar power attempts to directly capture this energy abundance, and we only need a tiny fraction of available land to run everything indefinitely. But that isn't as easy as it sounds. Solar is a broad class of technologies, including concentrated and thermal. But for simplicity, this video will mostly focus on photovoltaics, or PV, the most widespread solar implementation. Over the last two decades, its rate of progress has been astonishing, with many commercial panels achieving efficiencies over 20%. But the real progress has been in their cost. Their price performance, measured in dollars per watt, has improved exponentially for decades, getting 12% cheaper per year over the last half century. And that progress isn't showing any signs of slowing. In fact, over the last decade, costs fell faster than ever, at 19% annually. Around the world, it's setting record after record as the cheapest source of electricity. And this is only likely to continue, as it's getting cheaper at a rate seemingly no other energy technology can match. It may account for just 3% of global energy, but its impressive cost reductions have enabled global capacity to grow at an astonishing rate of over 40% per year over the last two decades. If this continues, 3% becomes 30% in just seven years. But can it really scale as quickly as it has in the past, or will it run into problems? How far can solar actually take us? The last video highlighted how cheap, clean sources are essential to escaping our global energy trap, and time is very much of the essence. With solar's incredible rise, it's tempting to think we are approaching the endgame of our energy transition, but that may be premature. As you might expect, the real picture is a bit more complicated than was just presented. Many of solar's drawbacks are well known, but understanding how they impact its future is difficult which issues are temporary hurdles, and which are major obstacles to future scaling. After all, it's the scope of these problems that really determine the degree and speed with which solar could impact the future of energy. The most obvious problem for solar is generation reliability. 
Most installations are great for supplementing existing energy infrastructure, but that isn't necessarily true at larger scales. Cloudy days and long winters don't make for a consistent energy source, creating both daily and seasonal challenges for an electric grid. Worse still is timing, as solar generates peak power during hours where electricity demand is relatively low. Energy grids are complex, drawing electricity from a variety of sources. Some sources aren't predictable, nor can they quickly be turned on and off to match supply with demand. Large quantities of solar makes this balance especially difficult, and excess electricity may have to be dumped to prevent system damage during oversupply. A number of technologies aim to address solar's reliability, but it remains the primary barrier to future scaling. The greater its percentage of grid generation, the larger the problem becomes. Concentrated solar aims to improve this reliability by using a circular array or parabolic mirrors to reflect solar energy towards heating a receiver. The receiver gradually releases that heat to drive a turbine. As such, concentrated solar provides a more stable and usable generation window. However, while it does integrate into the grid better, for now, it remains a much more expensive alternative to photovoltaics. There are many electricity storage technologies which aim to resolve the generation reliability of many renewables. From lithium batteries, pumped hydro, hydrogen, flywheels, and even compressed air. While grid storage could be the suite of technologies to propel renewables, they're still in the early stages of development. How long will they have to store energy for? Will they be cost effective? How quickly can we scale them? The viability of promising storage technologies will be explored in their own video. But for now, we can say that without cheap, scalable and versatile storage, solar's contribution to our future energy infrastructure will be severely limited. Some of solar's issues aren't as obvious, nor is the scope of the problem. Resource scarcity is sometimes cited as a future barrier for large-scale photovoltaics. Copper indium gallium diselenide, or SIGS, is a popular panel utilizing rare earth elements ability to increase a panel's photonic absorption coefficient whilst enabling thinner film manufacture. But rare earth metals like gallium and indium have limited supply, leading some to suggest we may run out if PV production increases. Though it's perhaps misleading to say we're running out, rather, it's more accurate to say that current mining rates will struggle to meet long-term increased demand without increasing extraction, and more extraction gets progressively harder. Gallium and indium are extracted in low quantities from bauxite, zinc, tin, and silver ores. For the most part, deposits aren't especially rare, but we aren't currently set up for larger scale extraction. The challenge is less about running out, but how quickly supply can respond to a significant demand spike, particularly for indium. More demand prompts more extraction, but adding smelting capacity takes a few years. Material shortages could lead to cost spikes and at least temporarily slow solar's rapid growth. It's cheaper and more sustainable to recycle rare earths than open new mines, and there are increasing efforts to do this. Expanding recycling activities can simultaneously decrease both supply risk and cost. In the longer term, the rapid fall of space launch costs are lowering the barrier to asteroid mining, which also happens to be a vast source of rare earths. But the viability of that is best saved for a future video. Rapid cost reduction has been a big part of solar's rise, but it needs to continue if solar is to become a universal energy solution. Its global average levelized cost of electricity, ELCO, is already very impressive, showing it's already cheaper than fossil fuels. But we need to be careful about generalizations with this figure, as there is a selection bias at play. Many installations aim to utilize solar in favorable situations and environments, as this maximizes the return on investment. But this does mean that solar's current ELCO isn't necessarily reflective of what it would be as a globally versatile solution. An obvious example of this is regional variance. What do you do in regions that don't get much sun? After all, solar's record-breaking cost headlines all have something in common. They're all in regions of high solar irradiance. Santiago gets around twice Edinburgh's annual solar radiation, greatly affecting the ROI of PV systems. 
non-equatorial regions also have greater seasonal variation, exacerbating long-term storage problems. Is it realistic for solar to scale into those regions? But there's more. So far, we've focused on electricity generation, but that's only part of our global energy trap. In the last video, we saw how producing building and industrial heat contributes just as much carbon as power generation. Clean electricity is only half the battle, and producing clean heat energy is much harder to solve. To be cost competitive with fossil fuels, electricity generation typically needs an ELCO of between 5 to 18 cents per kilowatt hour. For producing heat, it typically needs an ELCO of just 2.2 to 8 cents per kilowatt hour. That's another 60% cheaper. One potential option is thermal solar. It lacks the flexibility of PV's electricity production, but captures heat directly at three times the efficiency. While it's not a new technology, it's yet to see the explosive growth of PV. Despite its simplicity compared to photovoltaics, the installation complexity and cost is higher. While cheap heat generation remains a big challenge for photovoltaics, the problem is particularly bad when the regional and heat problems stack together. Using solar to heat buildings or found steel is especially difficult in a low solar irradiance region, becoming up to six times more expensive. Will solar really be able to overcome these costs? Still, universal photovoltaics might not be off the cards just yet. We've already seen how solar is cheaper than fossil fuels, at least in optimal regions. And even if it isn't cheaper everywhere, the exponential cost reduction we saw earlier means that it's only a matter of time before it's true for electricity everywhere. If last decade's 19% annual fall in cost continues, then PV will halve in cost every four years. So what's cost viable in Los Angeles should soon be cost viable in Stockholm. So long as this exponential rate continues, solar will quickly become the cheapest source of electricity across the world, irrespective of location. In fact, even when it comes to heat, while it may take longer, the story is similar. PV's record electricity costs are so cheap, they're even highly cost effective for heat generation, at least in principle. So global heat generation may also be a possibility sooner than you might think. It seems the cost and scalability of solar put it on a trajectory to be a major, if not the major source of not just electricity, but maybe our whole future energy system. But perhaps this analysis is overly simplistic. There are still a number of cost problems we overlook by focusing on ELCO. For example, photovoltaics are extremely cost effective in the long run due to long life and little maintenance. But upfront capital costs still present a major funding challenge compared with other sources. Can we really assume that PV will get exponentially cheaper? Or are there fundamental limiting factors? What determines the cost of PV and are there production or business avenues for reducing them? What future improvements can we see in the research pipeline? While a solar future looks very promising, there is a lot more we still need to investigate to truly understand its potential. And of course, energy technologies don't exist in a vacuum. How do other emerging technologies like small modular reactors compare? These are all topics worth a future video. But first, perhaps the most critical question about solar and renewables future is storage cost. So far, we've only focused on how cheap PV is for generating electricity. But we can't have large-scale solar without adding storage. Cheap generation doesn't matter much if the systems that will capture and store energy are prohibitively expensive. For that reason, understanding electricity storage is essential to understanding the future of energy, and an upcoming video will look at just that. So, what are the leading methods of energy storage? How cheap will they get? Can these technologies enable a renewable energy revolution? Let's find out.